All thanks and praise is due to God. <clears throat> we seek God's help and forgiveness. We seek refuge in God from the evil within ourselves and the consequences of our evil deeds. Whoever God guides will never be led astray, and whoever God allows to go astray will never find guidance. I bear witness that there is no God but God alone without any partners, and I bear witness that Muhammad is God's servant and God's messenger. You who believe, be mindful of God as is God's due, and make sure you devote yourselves to God to your dying moment. Wanting for my sister what I want for myself. This is a theme that was used recently, and um, for those who know me know that this is a, a mantra that I um, spoke of and practiced often for years. Um, when I received the invitation to give a uh, Koopa at the Women's Mosque of America, I immediately told myself, you can't do this, you're not worthy, you have issues. Um, and then I remembered when a person, a brother who was upset with me said, you're trying to be the email. And me thinking at the time, who me? Not even. So uh, after the invitation panic receded, I asked myself, do you have something to share with your sisterhood? And I answered yes. And this is all done in milliseconds. So we have been conditioned to devalue ourselves to our ability, our worth, our contributions, and lastly, our intellect and to accept what has been told to us as being a norm, um, as being correct, um, how we should act, no matter whether it makes us feel negative or not. Um, we accept those contexts, those comments, um, and we allow our individual reasoning and logic to become unimportant avoided, downgraded, and just not needed. Let us do better. We're worth a lot more, and we can do better. So my talk is not to Muslim women. My conversation is with women, all women and others. I want for you what I want for myself. And what I want for myself is I want us to take back, regain, discover ourselves. Let us remind ourselves in Surah 49. I love this Surah. And I think it's really relevant to the Women's Mosque of America. Oh, humankind, we created you from a single pair of a male and a female and made you into nations and tribes that ye may know each other. Verily, the most honored of you in the sight of God is the one who is the most righteous of you. And God has full knowledge and is well acquainted with all things. We have a responsibility of making the world a better place, a just place. On this earth for ourselves, our daughters, the next generation, teens, women, humanity. Many of us have been harmed by each other, other women, men, family, friends, strangers. And the reason for the harm are usually almost because of, almost always because of a need or interest, real or not. Romantic, ego, competition, dominance, jealousy, hatred, greed, and or mental illness. We can't possibly adhere to what God says in the Quran about humans of different nations and tribes getting to know each other if we despise each other and are doing harm to one another. We cannot sow seeds, spread roots, stand tall, spread our branches to one another this way by harming one another. We can't do it. God reminds us in the Quran that verbally, never will God change the conditions of a people until they change themselves. 
So let's ask ourselves, if we are not healthy, if we are not healthy, if our womanhood is not healthy, how can our children and our communities be healthy if we're not healthy? In fact, our communities are not healthy. Our families are not healthy. So what's important is unity. And that's God's plan. So it was supposed to read, what is important is God's plan, plan of unity. And so I'll say again, let us do better. We can. Why should we work to correct wrongs and misconceptions and do right? That's a question. Why should we? So I'm going to reference Surah 13. Those to whom we have given the book rejoice at what hath been revealed unto thee. But there are among the clans those who reject a part thereof. Say, I am commanded to worship God and not to join partners with God. Unto God do I call, and unto God is my return. And so here's another one of my favorites of the surahs. So I'm going to start with 13, um, 22. God says, those who patiently persevere, seeking the continence of their Lord, establish regular prayer, spin out of the gifts we have bestowed for their sustenance secretly and openly, and turn off evil with goods, for such there is a final attainment of the eternal home. And it continues, gardens of perpetual bliss, they shall enter there, as well as the righteous among their fathers, their spouses, their offsprings, and angels, that sh angels shall enter unto them from every gate with salutations. Peace unto you, for that ye persevered in patience. Now how excellent is the final home. So... I find these surahs, these particular uh, in 13, very romantic. It likes answers or provides everything that I think one needs to be happy, right? And then it continues with the surah. But those who break the covenant of God after having plighted their word thereto and cut asunder those things which God has commanded to be joined and work mischief in the land on them is the curse for them is a terrible home. And this is what I was born and raised in a community and Muslim, and this is the scale that I use for myself. Just that, uh, what I just spoke of, I use it as a scale because I do not want to leave this earth with my scales in the eye of my Lord being negatively unbalanced. I don't want to have to go in there and try to explain why it's negatively unbalanced. I don't want to do that. So everything that I do, I try to live by that, that motto, okay? So be mindful, this is 1326. The worldly rejoices the life of this world, but the life of this world is but little comfort in the hereafter. So we can want this and we can have that and we can ooh ah, but it don't mean squat in the, in the long run. And we need to remember that. So this is what I say. If it cannot be found in any of our holy books that women, women, are to be seen and never heard, or not seen by others in a public setting, or not allowed to read, study, marry at their will, divorce, to have children or not, to be subdued in spirit, to be abused, physically, verbally, mentally, or cannot meet or have Juma amongst other women or hear other women speak in a public platform and or are not allowed the will or ability to thrive as a human being, then who is to say that all the above is permissible? 
So I want to kind of repeat that, but I won't. We can discuss that a little later on. We as women cannot say, well, this is the way things are. It is said in the Hadith or this Sheikh or this Imam or this public superstar says. We must always defer to what God commands via Al Quran. Chapter 5. To God belongs the dominion of the heavens and the earth and all that is in here that is herein, and it is God who has the power over all things. And you know, we say these things, but do we really believe these things? And I think that's really important. Keeping in mind that God does not change the condition of people until they change that, excuse me, they change what is in themselves. Consider questioning and reconsidering the things, actions, traditions, cultures we have been conditioned to believe in is right for us women. Let's just kind of look at these things a little bit more and in detail. God says we are to grow towards knowledge, sunlight, like the branches of trees, and produce, be productive, and healthy, and nourish a product, our children, our communities, ourselves, actually. These situations and conditions amongst our religious communities under the guise of the religion or religious law is literally killing women and children, both male and female, in our communities. And we're talking our community in particular, we're talking Judaism, we're talking Christianity, we're talking all religions. This problem is, is world, worldwide and religion-wide. But we need to handle our business, and this is why we're having these conversations. So you have sons and um, you have sons that see how their mothers are treated, and they say they will not treat their wives this way. But then believe it's okay to disrespect or ill-treat their sisters. Now, how does that make sense? But that's what it is. We have to stop and acknowledge our thoughts, our behaviors, and our actions all the time. Or we have a son raised by a Renaissance father, but because of the community's influence, he becomes or they become part of those that encourage or view it acceptable to be chauvinistic or view women as entities to use and abuse, not seen as individuals at all. Or we have a home climate where a daughter told by her father certain things supported and enforced by male family members or even women family members that keep the daughter from speaking up for herself or pursuing her dreams. There was a um, PBS focus, and I probably told you a couple of times I'm a PBS um, junkie. But anyway, um, there was a PBS focus that showcased a noted new paint artist that asked her husband permission to pursue her passion to paint art. Um, she was allowed to practice only after her family obligations, which was around midnight. So after everybody was fed and the house was clean and everything was done, that was about midnight, then she could start practicing. The husband admitted he did not give any thoughts to his wife's passion for art. Um, he did not support her efforts. He stated it was not until she won an award for the artwork that he first paid any attention to that passion that she had for art. So my question to us, not trying to be nasty, not trying to be rude, not trying to bang bang, but my question to us is, did the husband pay attention after he realized that she could make money from her artistic ability or that she had some talent that others appreciated? So now he must take note of her talents because others are doing it. So I make these assertions. If the people in our lives truly love us and want the best for us, 
They will allow us to follow our dreams of an education, a career, a profession, not abandon us, but support us. Very important. I believe that if the husband loved his wife as his partner, and I'm making assertions, I'm real general, um, but if he loved his wife as his partner and not a possession, he would not have slowly and reluctantly allowed her the luxury of expanding her new discoveries for the love of art and painting. So I'm gonna go a little personal here. My father prayed to God to send some, him someone to love. Um, and there's a, phone, a, a song by Percy, I wanna say Mayfield, but I know I'm wrong. But anyway, I, I'm supposed to know this song because I, my father speaks of it all the time. But um, he would pray for God to send him someone to love. He was so lonely and damaged from being used as a guinea pig for the medical research for the state and federal government and did not think there was a woman who would accept him the way he was. These are his words. He found my mother. Better, better God sent my mother. He was blessed and he knows it. My dad is 92 now. The love my father has for my mother and my mother's 80, 12 years difference. So the love my father has for my mother is so unconditional and sustaining for him, my mother, and it has been beneficial for their children, grands and greats, as well as family, friends, and extended family and acquaintances as examples. And so I say that to say this, stability is far reaching, stability. So my father never clipped my mother's wings. My mother never clipped my father's wings. And my father never clipped his daughter's wings. He taught his daughters how to protect themselves against the things men do to women. And I, this is my father. He told my sister and I when teaching us to drive, you must be able to drive any type of car or truck because your husband may purchase a stick shift car, and you only know how to drive a standard. He said you should also know how to reverse and parallel park. Now you know he was right. <laughs> you know he was right. Okay. So I'm going to say mutual love and respect can solve all of our problems, personal, social, professional, religiously, globally. Doing the right thing is just not what is acceptable. It is being honest and following what God has ordained and not what man has ordained. And most important is using our logic, our intellect to resolve our problems personally, socially, professionally, religiously. We can be successful by fortifying and reestablishing our faith that God has not forsaken women or given instructions to harm women. And we can go and uh, reference verse 33. When you see this verse, you go, ah. But when you listen to it and you read it, it makes all the sense in the world. The submitting men, the submitting women, the believing men, the believing women, the obedient men, the obedient women, the truthful men, the truthful women, the steadfast men, the steadfast women, the reverent men, the reverent woman or women, the charitable men, the charitable women, the fasting men, the fasting women, the chaste men, the chaste women, and the men who commemorate God frequently and the commemorating women. God has prepared for them forgiveness and great, re, great recom, re, recompense. I'm a reading specialist, believe it or not. Prayer is a ritual. Prayer, excuse me, as a ritual is without faith. Faith is the belief in God, no more, no less, real serious. 
I've said what I've said. May God forgive all of us. Alhamdulillah, our praise and thanks are due to God alone. Wanting for my sister what you want for yourselves. I'm wanting for your sister what you want for yourself, Al Quran. In my research for this talk, I first read about Islamic history, and this was encouraged by every previous Katiba's Kupas, um, which I have. Uh, have been enlightening, informative, and educational, and very much appreciated. I want to personally thank them. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So I looked into the history. Um, pretty much I went back the last 75 years, plus years in particular. Um, what we've been doing is we've been spending our time fighting over if my Islam is better than your Islam, is my religion better than your religion? Um, is, or is the Western practice of religion equal or better than the middle class, uh, Middle Eastern or European or African form of practicing something? And we've been wasting a lot of time. After Prophet Muhammad's death, the people began, began searching and demanding for a conceptual Islamic state. As long as a decision did not conflict with spirit of the faith, this was the litmus test for something becoming law. So I'm gonna say that again. As long as a decision, a decision did not conflict with the spirit of the faith, this was the litmus test for something becoming law. Leadership was slow to offer solutions based on Quran to the people. And this is when a few hundred years after the death of the prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him, the different religious sciences emerged and our rights as women became marginalized. This was the perfect opportunity for a subjugation of the female. Perfect opportunity. First half of the 21st uh, century, a widespread revival of Islam occurred. What happened? The constraints of the political servitude had been broken. 17 Muslim countries had attained independence during those last two decades. And this was also true for, again, Christianity and Judaism. The great challenge became how to reestablish the religious ideology in the mid 20, 20th century. Instead of getting better, things got worse. Modernism, modernism failed because of the concentration and, concentration and determination to imitate the West. Conservatism failed because it did not take into consideration the change is constant and dependable. The problem was how to translate ideology into practice and reconstruct the socio-political life. We cannot ignore and it, um, we cannot ignore change and its demands. We have to have a creative response to new challenges. So that means, you know, sometimes we have to think out the box just a little bit. So in, in Islam, equity, justice, and fair play reigns. That's what we judge things by, okay? Equity, justice, and fair play. So I thought what I like most to see as a woman, a Muslim, and as a business person, and that was a serious thought, thinking process. But I thought what I'd like to see um, is my do, as stated in Al Quran and the Sunnah. I'd like to see equity. I'd like to see justice. 
And I, I like to see fair play when it comes to dealing with womanhood, sisterhood in our community. That's what I would like to see. I then ask myself, why do I want these things? They're not necessarily material, but spiritual and social. And so I'll say to you, have you noticed how happy we are when we find the time to spend together? Just unobstructed, innocent, clean, pure, sisters hanging out, having a good time. Consider what it says in Surah Juma, which speaks about establishing spe special congregational prayers on Friday. The focus of Juma is to bring about weekly socialization for specific reasons of observing the spirit of God's order and, that, and not just mere custodians of God's law. The Kupa requires your attention and praying, praying together fosters unity. So I'm aware that many of us um, believe as women that Juma is only optional for us as women, as Muslim. And it's a requirement for the men in our lives. Many of us, many of us feel that it's a luxury to go to Juma not necessarily a right. Some of us are living in non-Muslim countries and often Juma is the only time that we get a chance to hang out, spend time with one another. So I'd say today, 2018, 21st century, women go to work, every day, work hard. So why can't they regularly go to Juma if they want to? Nobody's saying you had to, but if you want to. Maybe it's time to rethink those rulings from 1400 years ago where women's roles and opportunities were much different in society. I encourage my sisters to support the Women's Moths of America. We should always challenge the status quo. Is it right? Is it a good thing for all? Is it a good thing for me? But most importantly, as women, let us support the dream and our rights to have an unobstructed shared freedom space. That's a long, list of words, but they're very important words. Unobstructed shared freedom space. So let's have, let's support that dream and our rights to have that unobstructed shared freedom space to explore, grow, and develop in our religion, our communities, in our sisterhood, and in our fellowship an opportunity to grow in all ways, especially spiritual. Let us recognize the courage it took to achieve this milestone and ask ourselves, what was missing in our communities that an unobstructed shared freedom space was so needed? This person did not do it because she is a nice person and she is a nice person, but that's not why she did this. By her accomplishments, she showed and then provided. The Women's Mosque of America is a manif is manifestation that this young Muslima indeed wants for her sister what she wants for herself. And with the belief in God, she took on her dreams and she challenged it. And we're sitting here. So for us, who have attended on a regular basis, we need to continue to invite people to come to the Women's Mosque of America. 
For those who have maybe never come, I personally invite you to come and check it on your own. Check for yourselves. And then for those who have been before, I think you, if you've only come once, you should have been able to witness the importance of the Women's Mods of America, why it is important, and it is important. I don't care what people say. I don't care what they might think. Women's Mods of America is very, very, very important, and we need to support it. So let's invite other folks. Let's bring folks. Let's use the intelligence, will, and intellect and sense of fair play that God gave us. And then I'm going to close with, oh, humankind, we created you from a single pair of a male and a female. I told you it was my favorite. And made you unto nations and tribes that ye may know each other verily, the most honored of you in the sight of God is he who is the most righteous of you. And God has full knowledge and is well acquainted with all things. God commands justice, doing good, generosity towards relatives, and God forbids what is shameful, blameworthy, and oppressive. God teaches you so that you may take heed, Quran 1690. Let's perform the prayer. Thank you.